Okay, we're going to go ahead and start our three hour capital district real estate agent business planning workshop. Uh, we've been doing these workshops now for, I don't know, probably about six or seven months. And basically what it is, it's kind of really a continuation of the masterclass that we're doing. Uh, a lot of times uh, we get a lot of people that want a little bit ec extra information and want to go a little deeper uh, on some of the things that uh, we talk about that make agents successful, give them that foundation uh, to build their business. So um, we're going to go through it. Uh, it's designed to be a three hour workshop, but it usually doesn't take us that long. Uh, we'll probably be done, you know, a little over two hours uh, if possible, but we'll make sure that uh, you get a lot of great content from it and that you're able to uh, build on your business plan going into, uh, you know, your, your next year here uh, in real estate. Uh, I ask that if your, you know, mic is unmuted, that you uh, turn off any cell phones that you have at this time. Um, definitely any background noise, just make sure you go ahead and, and mute the mic. I uh, want to start off by talking a little bit about my background. Some of you may or may not know that uh, I started in this business back in 1998. I started as a single agent, uh, then developed a small team, uh, had a, a bigger team. We were the number one uh, team here in the Capital District in 2009, 2010. Uh, and then from there, I started doing more of a brokerage and started building agents onto our brokerage. We have about 85 agents uh, here in the Capital District. We have three office locations, one in Rotterdam, one in Clifton Park, and one in Saratoga. And I, I gotta say for the most part, you know, we, we do about a thousand homes. Last year was about 978, but anywhere between 800 to a thousand homes is probably the average of where we're at. Our goal is obviously to do better than that, uh, but that's about what the volume that we do. We're the number one independent office uh, here in the capital district as well, independent agency. Uh, and then above us, we have, you know, the four franchises that are here locally. But uh, my wife, uh, my two children, I have two girls, 20 and 23, Julia and Christine. Uh, and my wife, we've been married for about 27 years. And I also own a Allstate Insurance franchise. Actually, that's where I'm at now. I'm up in the upstairs office using uh, the facility there, which is next door to our real estate business here in Clifton Park. Uh, so that's a little about my background, but I started coaching in 2006. Uh, I loved it and continue to do it and continue to mastermind with agents all over the country. So a lot of stuff that I'm going to show you here today, um, a lot of it was stuff that I picked up from other agents. A lot of it was stuff that we developed in our mastermind groups uh, and some of it's from other coaches, you know, but the stuff that I'm going to show you are, are not things that uh, I just come up with and think, oh, this would be a great idea. These are actually proven strategies and proven um, tools that we use in our business today uh, that has made us successful and will hopefully do the same for yourself. Uh, you should have received the worksheet, the business planning worksheet, and it goes over six different topics on there. Uh, we're going to talk about these six topics. First topic is going to be about lead generation. And I really believe that lead generation is, is you know, the foundation uh, of our business and making sure that um, you take, have some great takeaways, but really what are you going to apply? This whole business planning thing is about you know, what did you, you learn? What are you going to, sorry about that. I was getting the phone call. Let me just shut this off real quick. So I'm not getting uh, calls. There we go. So the, the lead generation for what we want to, you know, want to be able to share with you guys today. With that, uh, number two is lead conversion, right? We, we developed these leads. Now we want to convert them. Uh, so we'll talk a little about that and go deeper into the conversion and scripts and dialogues that we may use there. Um, the listing process, we have a 14 step listing process when we list properties. Uh, we're going to go over that because it's great to get a listing appointment, but if you don't know what you do when you, when you get to the listing, uh, that's a problem. Uh, number four, the actual listing presentation, making sure that you have a listing presentation. Each, each and every one of my agents have it. I've always used it. I don't go on a listing appointment without it. And I think it's very imperative, especially when you're up against competition. And in today's environment, having a very, very short, short amount of inventory that's out there, uh, it's even more imperative for you to be using a listing presentation. Uh, number five, the transaction process, go over some tips with that, and then leave it off with six uh, repeat and throw business. So this is what we're going to be going over. And I'll ask you at the end of each uh, session here uh, to just jot down uh, one, two, maybe three different ideas of what your biggest uh, takeaway was. Um, and I really love to have that participation from you. Okay, so there are the six topics that I mentioned, right? We just went over that. 
And I'm going to start off with lead generation. So in lead generation, I feel that, you know, we could buy all kinds of leads, right? We can go to Zillow, Trulia, uh, OpCity. I mean, there's a ton of different companies out there now that are, are really banking on uh, agents' performance and agents' need to get these leads. And uh, it's a huge industry right now. But at the end of the day, real estate's all about building relationships. Real estate's all about um, that no like, and trust factor. Uh, and that's what I put on there. People do business who they know, like, and trust. And that hasn't changed. That's one of the things that I learned early on uh, in my insurance career. And then obviously applied it over to real estate. But really, if you think about it, uh, this applies to any uh, sales position out there um, or any business that's out there. If they don't know who you are, they're not going to work with you. If they don't like you, more likely they're not going to work with you unless you have a monopoly. Uh, and if they don't trust you, which I think is the most important, uh, they're definitely not going to do business with you. So this is a, a sheet that uh, we came up with. It's called the Project 100. And basically what this sheet is, it's, it's a way for uh, people to kind of think about uh, who are people that we can put in our database? Who are people that we can reach out to that know, like, and trust us to do business with? And whether you're a new agent or you're an experienced agent that wants to do more business, um, you need to grow your database, right? Because at the end of the day, your success or failure in the real estate business is in direct proportion to the number of people that are in that database that you have. That when they think of real estate or insurance or anything else, but when they think of real estate, they think of you. So we want to continue to build that real estate business uh, and build those, those relationships. And that's what the Project 100 sheet does. It really just kind of goes, you know, who does your taxes? Who's your dentist? Who's your doctor? Uh, I just sold my dentist uh, his home. It's been going to him for probably 30 years now. Uh, and not sold his home, but sold his practice that he was that he was in. But when he sold his practice, was his big asset the building? No. Was it the computer? No. Was it the you know the chair uh, that I sat in for 30 years? No. It was the relationship that he had with his database. So that client database, he was able to sell to someone else, and that's where the money was. Right? It was in the actual relationship with the database. So uh, it amazes me that so many real estate agents don't have a real estate database. Um, you know, they sometimes have things in an Excel spreadsheet or they have files that are sitting around, but it's so important that you develop that. And uh, there, was a, there was a website uh, or database that I refer to that a lot of people have had a lot of success with. And, and the good news, it's free. And it's called HubSpot, H-U-B-S-P-O-T.com. HubSpot is a great uh, database service, CRM, it's free. Now, if you want more bells and whistles on it, you can, um, you know, pay uh, things like $40 a month for it. And I think they have different levels. But the point is that you could start free by having a database that you could put all your contacts in, put all the notes in there, put their birthdays or anniversary dates, um, and just plug all the information you want about them. Have a, a future follow-up date with them. You could send emails from it. Uh, but that's all you really need a database for. So that at the end of the day, if you want to do a campaign or you want to, send out a, an invitation for a pie event. I'll talk to you about that. We just did that this past week. Uh, or if you want to send information out for uh, some type of event that you're doing, or you just want to send out videos, right? Just to keep in touch with uh, your database, you can do that with a, with a click of a mouse by just doing it right through your database. So uh, very, very important that you guys have that. So check it out, hubspot.com. Uh, we also have a lot of agents that still use Top Producer. It's a very, very good software program. Uh, and it's a great online software program as well. So how we sort and qualify our database. A lot of people will ask, you know, um, I have all these names, you know, I have 15,000 names in my database. I said, okay, great. Well, how many are your, you know, VIP clients? What do you mean? How many people are your, you know, your eight clients that have given you referrals or you've done business with? I don't know. They're just all 15,000. So what do you do? You just send out a massive email blast? That's not good because you'll get spammed, old emails, um, you get a lot of no hits. So that's not a really good way to do it. So we sort and qualify our database. And actually, you know, every year about this time, we talk about revamping it or just going back through all the different sales that we had for this year to make sure that they're all tagged correctly. So sorting and qualifying your database. Uh, this is uh, how we do it here in our office. And I'll start off with, um, I'll start off from the bottom. Okay, because I think it makes more sense when I start off from the bottom. So the D client, who's a D client? D clients are prospects who you really 
don't want to really work with maybe in the future. Maybe did a transaction with them. Uh, it didn't really go that well. You know, I, I could think of one just recently that I had. It was a divorce situation. Both parties were so miserable, so mean to my staff. Um, I, I say a little mean to me. I mean, I got pretty thick skin, so I didn't really, it didn't really bother me. I understood why they were being that way, but I don't know. I, I really don't want to work with them in the future if I don't have to. So I put them down as a D client. But the reason why I put them in the database instead of just deleting them is because I want to track, right? If I did, you know, so many sales for that year, I want to make sure that those numbers uh, match up. So D client uh, gets coded as a D client. So there's little tabs within your database that you can actually put source or where it came from, but you can also classify them. So I classify them as a D client. A C client, these are prospects who have not referred to any leads or may um, not even do so in the future. Uh, these are new leads, prospects that you're following up with uh, that you've not had a conversation with them about them doing referrals for you in, a, in the future or doing business. So in other words, what would that be? A C, a C lead would be an internet lead that you get. A C lead might be someone you met at an open house. A uh, C lead might be someone that, um, uh, you know, called off your sign, right? But you wanted to get them in a database so you follow up with them. Uh, you put them in there as a C client because, and, and I'll tell you when we're all done with this, as to why, just so that it's not part of that 15,000 uh, name database. You want to make sure that, you know, the whole goal on this is to move that C uh, piece of business up to a B and then that B to an A and that A to a VIP. So C client, like I said, is just someone that you just randomly meet. Could be even at a networking event, right? You go to a networking event, you meet someone, you get five business cards, you put them into your system, they start off as a, a C client. Uh, a B client is, is a prospect that has, um, you know, stated, and it's wrong there, a uh, client that has stated that they would do business with you in the future or refer potential prospects to you. So in other words, uh, I, I tell you an example of a B client. So a C client would be someone I met at a networking event, met with them, got their information, and then I mailed them a card, right? We went through a series of, of things after we meet someone at a networking event. And I sent them a personal note. I follow up with a phone call. Would love to get to know you a little bit. Can we meet for a cup of coffee? Can we do a Zoom call? Uh, where, I'm gonna shut this uh, sun here coming in. I'll get blinded by the sun here. Um, so, so what I would do is I would send them a note, get with them on a Zoom call, and find out a little bit more about their business. And then I would ask them, you know, if you were looking to buy or sell a home, or if you had a friend or a family member who was, um, do you have a real estate agent that you refer them to, right? So that's an old Brian Buffini script. Brian was, was a great mentor of mine, and I was a, um, uh, one of his actual um, coaching members that, you know, we had one of the 100 Days of Greatness program that he ran, and I was one of his uh, um, uh, coaches for that. And we, were, we taught a lot of our agents that script. But it's a real easy script, right? If you're looking to buy or sell, or if you had a friend or a family member who was looking to buy or sell a home, do you have a realtor that you refer them to? And if they say no, geez, I, I'll give you the business, then we would then make them from a C client to a B client because we had now a mutual agreement that if they know of anyone looking to buy or sell, or if they were looking to buy or sell, they would do business with us. So that's who a B client is. An A client is a client who has done business with you in the past or has referred you business uh, in, for future business, right? So they did business, they gave you a lead, now they become an A client because I want more of that type of activity. I want more referrals. I want to do business with more people. They become an A client. And then VIP client, which is the last one, these are your biggest, biggest raving fans, right? This is my Aunt Ruth, who's one of my biggest fans, who, you know, passes out my business cards. Um, Always rave and tell all of her friends, you know, how great uh, our company is and how they, if you're going to sell a home, you need to use Willie, right? Uh, and we have a few of those, uh, a lot of those, I should say, but usually that's going to be your smaller group of people, you know, your top 10, 20, 30 people. Um, and then your A clients will be more and your B clients will be more and et cetera. So that's how you sort and qualify your database from the VIP right down to the D. So hopefully, uh, uh, you guys are doing that with your database as well. All right, so let's jump into lead generation. Um, the lead generation piece, what I found, if you look at the left side of your screen, the average agent does, I don't know, seven or eight deals a year, right? That's what uh, um, uh, 
the sources out there tell us, the National Association of Realtors, uh, NAR says that the average agent does seven or eight deals a year. So with that being said, when you look at their business, they, they usually only have maybe one or two lead generation pillars. Usually it's their database, right? People that they know, because it's people who know, like, and trust them will do business with them. Or maybe it's off uh, their open, an open house that they may do, or maybe it's, you know, doing uptime uh, in an office where they're, you know, sitting floor time or something like that. But average agents only do seven or eight deals a year because they don't have a lot of pillars set up. Your better agents will have three or four pillars set up. Here's where they're actually going to do open houses on a consistent basis. They're going to, you know, have a great database that they're, that they're working. And they're going to have various online uh, type of things that they're getting as well. Realtor.com, uh, Zillow leads, uh, Op City. They're going to be buying leads from different sources. Uh, so these are the ones that are a little better agent, probably doing 12 to 15 sales a year, making a decent amount of money. Uh, but again, the best agents, right? And this is what we want to attract. We want to talk about the best agents, right? And what does a best agent uh, look like? Now, best agents usually have eight to 10 pillars that they have going. Uh, and what I mean by that is they have pillar of business that are coming from different areas. They're doing open houses. They're doing online. They're doing offline. They're doing social media. They're doing videos on social media, LinkedIn, um, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, right? Uh, geographic farming, they're going after certain areas that they want to get for listings. Uh, they have little niche type uh, events that they have where they'll do home seller workshops where they'll put that out to the public and actually do these monthly or every maybe twice a month where they do these home seller workshops that we do with our coaching members now. We just had one the other night with uh, Jereen down in New Jersey. She did a great job on her home seller workshop. Uh, John Stevens out in Watertown. We had Justin Croft out in Dallas. Uh, these guys, they, they do these workshops, inviting home sellers to the, sh uh, the workshop, and they do it virtually like this. Uh, and it only takes maybe 40, 45 minutes, but it's a great way to get in front of many people versus one-to-one. -one. All right, so that's what it looks like. And then, you know, breaking it all down to give you some examples. And, and you could uh, take pictures, you know, of any of these slides too, if you want to uh, take pictures of them. But you know, where do you get leads? What do they look like, right? So we already talked about on the left side, your COI, right? Your center of influence, your fear of influence, that's going to be your database. And uh, we talked about the ABCD, uh, must have TOMA, T-O-M-A, uh, top of mind awareness, right? That's what that stands for. Uh, you want to make sure that you're reaching out to your database at least twice a month. Um, you know, sometimes people, you know, we have 18 touch program. We're going to be talking about actually that tomorrow on our, on our master class, but uh, you know, Gary Keller talks about the 33 touch plan. So there's all different um, uh, strategies out there. But the main thing is that you want to make sure that you're in front of your people on a consistent basis. I like to say you should have at least 250 people minimum in your database. That's the goal to strive for. Um, not to say that, you know, you can't have more than that. You could definitely have more than that. Uh, but any less than that, I don't think you could really rely solely on that source of providing you some really good business. Uh, when, when you hit 250 people, it's a pretty good referral base, right? That's a pretty good uh, number of people that are having conversations about real estate. And hopefully, because you're top of mind, they're going to be referring you. Um, we talk about our 18 touch system, right? That's 12 newsletters a year. That's four postcards a year, two texts and calls. We'll go over that a little bit later uh, in this discussion. Uh, we talked about our Project 100 list already. Who do you know? Uh, but open houses, open houses are a great way. I, I've talked to some agents, they open house are a waste of time. And the reason why is because they never were really taught how to do a, an open house where they can generate a lot of business from it. Uh, a lot of the agents I talked to say open house is a waste of time are the ones that, you know, show up 10 minutes before the open house, stick a sign on the front lawn and wait for people to come because they put an ad in the paper. Uh, and then they're discouraged because no one came or the people that came are just people that, you know, saw a sign at the last minute. Uh, but we like to talk about mega open houses versus a traditional open house. Mega open houses where we actually start marketing this the Wednesday before. We put the signs out if we can the Friday before if, 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 if uh, you know, they're allowed. But we're also inviting and sending letters out to all the sellers in the area, right? Usually 250 sellers uh, within the radius of that home where we'll invite them to come on to 
uh, to come to the open house and we'll give them their own time. We'll say, hey, you know, um, from 12 to one is open to neighbors. Uh, from one to three is open to the general public. But if you could come between 12 and one, I love the opportunity for you to take a look at this home. You may know of a buyer, you know, who better to pick a, a buyer for this neighborhood than someone that actually lives in it. Um, but also I'd really like your opinion on what you think the price of this home is. And this is a great way for you to pick up sellers. Um, every time we do it, sellers really enjoy it because now they come as a invited guest versus the pest, right? If you would, where you get a lot of these nosy neighbors that show up and they're hiding and you know who they are. They walk in, they don't want to sign in. Uh, they're very vague, right? They're in and out, but they just want to be nosy and see what's going on in the house and take a look at someone's home. Um, but to be the invited guest, I mean, they'll have their flyer in their hand, their chest is out, right? Uh, and they love being part of that event. Uh, and they're honored to be invited to, to some of these because it's something that's different. And we build relationships with these sellers and have been able to pick up a lot of seller leads from it. Uh, offline leads, where can you get offline leads? What are offline leads, right? So there's different classified ads. Uh, we run those through our coaching program and through our agency as well. Uh, where we have little classified ads that we can put out there, whether it be for distress sales or for home sellers. Uh, these little little uh, classified ads still do work in newspapers and magazines. Uh, for sale by owners, uh, reaching out to them. How do you how do you work? How do you you know get onto them? Well, bizbo.com is a great source, um, and there's others. Uh, the Red X is another great source too. Um, expired listings, right? We we know what that is, people that uh, try to sell but didn't sell. Uh, cold call circle prospecting is another way to do that where you're cold calling around different listings. Uh, just listed, just sold postcards. We have a letter that we actually send out. We call it the ugly yellow letter. Uh, and basically it's a yellow letter that's handwritten out that get mailed out to communities. Let them know that, hey, we have a buyer. They might be willing to pay full price for your property if the inside of the home is exactly what they're looking for. And um, if you're looking to move in the next two or three months, give me a call. Be happy to uh, bring them over and take a look at it. And uh, that letter works very well. And then, you know, our personal brochure, sending out our personal brochure uh, and so many advertising that we do. So that's so many offline lead pillars that you can do. Uh, online leads. Uh, these are leads that uh, some of you may already be using, but there are some of them right here. You got Zillow, you got Realtor.com, OpCity.com, Bowl Leads, Craigslist, UpNest, HomeLight. Uh, theredx.com, T-H-E-R-E-D-X.com. That's a Fizbo's. This is one that we've been using recently that gets a lot of, generates a lot of business called inboxrealestateleads.com. Inboxrealestateleads.com. Uh, and you pay per lead. So uh, only the ones that you want. So if you want five buyer leads, you sign up for them. They'll start sending you three, four, five, six leads a day. You pick out which ones you want. You pay them $25, $35 a lead. I think seller leads are a little bit more than the buyer leads. And you get some leads. So that's a great way to do it. I know some people have had a lot of success with that. Uh, DaveRamsey.com, that's more for selected agents in a certain market doing a certain volume. Um, but uh, that's a good source. Sync, uh, you can go to sync.com. Uh, that's Commissions Inc. If you want to buy a platform. Um, I should probably add on here, Boomtown is another one. They just called me the other day. They're a great service, boomtown.com, market leader, uh, or your own website. But online leads, you can get all kinds of different uh, uh, online sources that are out there because that's where the eyes of the buyer and sellers are. They're online. Uh, some other pillars, networking. You know, What type of networking events do you go to or haven't you gone to or want to go to? A uh, great way to go to chamber events and lead groups. Now, because of our current situation with COVID, you know, some of these are going to be virtual. Um, there's a lot of virtual events that are going on that you can be part of and be able to meet people uh, and go from there. Mastermind groups, um, home shows, bridal shows, those are very effective. Uh, senior shows, home builder association, uh, and different charity events. So that's the networking side. Um, geographic farming. Uh, postcards, newsletter, calendar of events. Um, postcards is, is something that, uh, I'm sorry, geographic farming is something that I think is very interesting. And um, there's a, a good friend of mine, Russell Rhodes out of Dallas, uh, who does a great job. I mean, he owns pretty much some, some neighborhoods, 70% market share. 
and he will attribute it all to geographic farming. And he said, Willie, if I was coming into your market, any market uh, in, within your area, any neighborhood, he goes, I would penetrate that within 12 months. <clears throat> and he goes, I assure you that I'd probably be the number one agent in those markets too, because a lot of these neighborhoods really don't have anyone dominating. And, you know, and if they do, if they have 30% or more, then they're dominating. He goes, I wouldn't, you know, pay attention to those neighborhoods. But he said the majority of neighborhoods out there, uh, you know, you could definitely get into. So uh, he recommends 10 mailings a year uh, in August and December are the two months that he doesn't mail out to. But all the other months, uh, they're getting postcards, newsletter calendars, um, vendor lists of people in the area, those type of things. He does very well with that. Uh, mega open houses you can do in those geographic farms. You could do uh, top 10 sales is another flyer that we have with the top 10 sales uh, of that quarter or that month, uh, which goes really, very well. So people want stats. People want information about their properties. Uh, we have food drives. Uh, trade a can for a cone is a great uh, thing that we do where we actually rent a uh, an ice cream truck, right? One of those ice cream vans that go around and sell uh, ice cream to kids. We actually rent one for a couple of hours and we drive through certain neighborhoods collecting canned goods and trade canned goods for an actual ice cream cone. Uh, and that's worked out uh, very well for us. We didn't do it this year because of COVID, but we will be doing it again next year, hopefully, if things uh, get better. Uh, this one here, uh, niche events, right? Niche events, however you want to say that, live or virtual speaking, home seller workshop, home buyer workshops, lunch and learns. A lot of businesses out there that are looking for guest speakers. No reason why you can't come on for 10 or 15 minutes to talk to them about what you do and what you could do for them on buying or selling a home. Uh, we have resources. Uh, I have a, a, two books that I wrote, one on buying a uh, home and the other on selling a home. Uh, so we give those books out. And then we have this blue box um, with all kinds of information on there for pre-listing. So that's something um, that we use. I actually have a copy of our blue box here. Um, and basically the way it works is we mail this uh, blue box out, as you can see, has our information on it. Um, and in here, there's all kinds of goodies in here. Um, I'll tell you what's in here. So in here, there is a, a little bit about me, information, a little bio about me. There's um, what clients are saying about us. So some testimonials there. We have um, relocation services. We belong to leading real estate companies of the world. And we uh, you know, talk about the reload business and how we do very well with that, how we can help them not only locally, but globally. Um, meet our team. Uh, which is great because it kind of highlights all of our the people that work for us and their backgrounds and what they do. Okay, so that's on there. Uh, I mentioned uh, my book, a copy of my book, whatever person needs to know about selling a home in a capital district. There it is. Okay. Um, home seller guide, that's also in there. Nice home seller guide actually walks them through every room of their home. So whether it be the kitchen or dining room or different things that they do, it gives them a checklist of all the different things that they have to do uh, in, each, in each room, right? Whether it be the outside exterior or the inside, walking them through. And then on the back, we have a timeline that actually walks them through. We do talk about all the marketing. So photography, the drones, um, you know, online marketing and everything that we do but we also have um, a timeline from the time that they meet with us right to the time of the closing of all the different things that they can expect. And then we have a checklist here from your moving checklist from two months out right to the closing date of all the things that they have to do as far as uh, calling for a moving company, shutting off your utilities, um, you know, getting boxes, all those different things, who to notify um, so that you're prepared for moving day. And um, that's it, a legal checklist and then uh, some real estate terms for them to know there. So it's a really good guide and um, a lot of our clients really like it, but that goes in a blue box as well. And um, all right, so that's, that's it for that. Some other things here I'll go over the, as we go through, but again, 
you, you want to make sure that you're, you're standing out. And that's why we use this blue box because the blue box is what we use uh, to have a stand out before we go meet with the seller. Postcards, uh, I was talking about postcards with geographic farming. Here we show sales, right? So there was a study that went out about what, it, what is it that people want to know? What is it that people want to know in your community, right? What do people want to know um, that are people that we want to market to? And it came to three things really stuck out. People really wanted to know the value of their home. Why? Because it's usually their biggest asset that they, that they own. Uh, so they wanted to know what their home was worth. So that was number one. Number two, they wanted to know what other people's homes in the neighborhood sold for. Why? Nosy. Um, compare it to that, their home, right? So if that home sold for this, then my home's going to sell for that, et cetera. So they wanted to know that. And then number three, they wanted to know about community events, things that were going on in the community, whether it be um, a fair that was going on or whether it be a book club going on or uh, a parade that was going on, whatever that may be in their community, uh, that's very valuable information. So when you're sending out postcards, think about those three things. So here we show a lot of the sold properties in the area because we want to show those neighborhoods and those people that live in those neighborhoods that we sell a lot of properties and it gives them information on what's sold. On the back side of that postcard, you can see, and I apologize that it's a little bit small here, but you'll see the top 10 sales. And we'll actually go through and put the address and the price amount on all of those sales, okay? And then we actually tell them how many active listings, how many uh, sold listings are out there in that time period of January through March. And then we do it every quarter. Um, and we just listed something. We put the postcard here in the top right. Just list it. Let people know that that's coming up on the market. And then you'll see here, don't list your home without reading this book first. Uh, we want to have people come to us because we want them to bait, right? Everyone says, uh, find out what your home is worth, call us, right? Or find out what your home is worth, you know, go to this website. Well, everyone has that, but not a lot of people have a book. Or maybe it's a report that you come up with. And even if it's just two pages, it doesn't matter. You have to have something that's different in order to attract and have these sellers raise their hand. So we use a book and um, that's the postcard that goes out there. And you guys already saw a copy of that book. All right, um, another postcard before I switch on. This is a, a postcard that worked very good that Kate Charles, who's now Kate Penna and I use, where on one side, uh, she wanted, so the backstory of this is that Kate came to us, she was working two years in a business, didn't have a database, wasn't really doing that great in real estate, uh, came home every week and, you know, she lives in a neighborhood of about 1,700 homes. Uh, there's all these other real estate signs, some were hers. And when we sat down and we did our planning, I said, well, what are you doing, right? How, do you, how are you telling people that you're an agent? And she goes, well, I'm not really doing much at all. And I said, well, you're the secret agent. You're not telling, you know, people don't know who you are. We need to get you out there. We need to give them information that's valuable to, that neighbor, to your neighbors. And then if we keep doing that, they'll do business with you because they know, like, and trust you. And we'll be able to get more and more business there. So that's what we did. So for one year, we put a campaign together. We sent calendars out one month. We sent uh, newsletters out one month. We sent market update one month. We sent a postcard like this of, you know, find out what your Luther Forest home is worth online, go into the uh, website. And these are two properties that she sold. And then on the back, don't sell your Luther Forest home without reading his book first, right? So we gave him um, an actual testimonial there. We gave them um, information on how to get this free book, which was the bait. And she little by little started getting inquiries. And then those inquiries turned into clients. And I'm glad to say that after 12 months of doing this, uh, Kate was the number one agent in that neighborhood. And she sold more, almost double more than the prior agent um, or the second agent that was there. But now we promoted that as being the number one agent in Luther Forest. And um, so those are the things that you can do, anyone can do that as long as you put a strategy in place and you put a plan in place. And that's why we do these business planning workshops is to get you to really focus on what are you gonna do differently this year? If you're not happy with your results in, in 2020, what are you gonna do differently going into 2021 that's gonna hit the goals that you wanna hit and uh, be able to capitalize on, on some of these things, right? So those, that's the postcards there. Um, here's a couple other ones, you know, again, find out what your home is worth online. 
Uh, some stats here again, top 10 sales, that goes very well. Community Spotlight, um, we hired a videographer. Um, you could do it yourself, you don't have to do a videographer. You could set up a camera on a tripod and just interview someone if you wanted to. Uh, but if you go on to my YouTube page, williamiranda.com, I'm sorry, Willie Miranda on YouTube, uh, you'll be able to go into the actual, um, uh, we have a, a section there where it's just the community spotlights. And you could see what I did for my local barber, I did for local um, uh, junk re remover, uh, all veteran owned company. Uh, Billy was someone that you know, I've been going to for a haircut for a number of years. Um, and a quick story behind Billy is that Billy I've been going to probably for say 20 years, getting a haircut. She knows probably 20 different real estate agents that are out there. Actually, she has a family member that sells real estate. But uh, I, over the years, I've never received a referral from her for real estate. She lets me put her cards in there and all stuff, but never actually got anything. So when I started and I learned about this community spotlight event, I said, you know, I want to do a community spotlight on some businesses here in the area and give back. So I said to my videographer, let's go and interview Billy's Barbershop. We'll start there. So we did a quick interview and basically it was like, how'd you get started? You know, why do people go to you? What makes you different than other barbers in the area? And we gave her a list of maybe six or seven questions that she answered on video. And then my videographer did a, um, a B-roll of other parts of the business. And it came out really, really nice. Uh, you gotta check it out. And um, so she was like, okay, well, you know, what do I owe you for it? And I'm like, well, it's nothing. I said, this is something that I'm doing, giving back to the community. Um, but if you wanna pay me, just, you know, the biggest compliment would be, you know, if someone's looking to buy or sell real estate, send them my way. And she goes, okay, I'll do that. Uh, within three months, I received two. Within six months, I received two more. Uh, leads that I got from uh, from Billy, and it was because of the law of reciprocity. I really feel. In other words, I did something really nice for her. She wanted to give back, right? I didn't take anything from her. I just said, hey, you know, if you know of anyone, send them my way. That'd be great. And uh, she really appreciated. It. But the video came out so good that she had thousands and thousands of views, likes, comments. Uh, people that were say, Billy, we're so proud of you. You know, you got your own barbershop. And I remember when you were a kid and blah, 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 blah. But uh, to the point where it brought her to tears, that's how emotional she was uh, about the video that we did for her. So um, you never know, you know, and it cost me like, I don't know, $400, I think, you know, to get done. It was the best $400 I spent. I would rather spend $400 on that than going to buy Zillow leads. And um, so we've done multiple of these now community spotlight events and we're going to continue doing these you know once things turn here but uh, we've done we've done a couple through zoom too uh, we've done them that way uh, but uh, if you're really looking to penetrate and do give back to your community community spotlights work very very good uh, oh, that was just a, that was just an example there um, we talked about trade a can for a cone again we sent out these postcards um, Letting people know that we're going to be coming on this night between so you know five and eight. Um, bring a can out and we'll trade it for a cone. And uh, it was great. People came out, kids came out. I mean, you can see the kids there in the pajamas, and uh, they really, really loved it. And um, it only cost us maybe two hundred fifty dollars for the whole night paying ice cream, and we were able to fill up um, uh, four or five big barrels of canned goods that we're able to bring to the local food bank. So uh, it was a great event and we did it in August. So food bank loved it because usually they only get their donations like that towards the end of the year, like now, you know, November, December. And um, they need, they really need your help, um, you know, in the spring and also in the summer months because that's when the, the shelves are really bare in those food banks. All right. So that is um, the lead generation side. So I'm just going to, uh, go ahead and pull up the sheet here, which you guys should have. Um, well, I guess I don't have it on this screen here. Uh, but the sheet where it says, you know, what's your biggest takeaway? What was your number one thing? Maybe two or three things that you wrote down that you really want to do moving forward. So, um, Draga, I have you on here. I know that uh, this is being recorded for others, but um, what, what did you think, Draga? But oh, you're muted. Yeah. 
Okay. You there, Draga? Yes, yes, oh, yes. I didn't know how okay. to unmute. <laughs> Actually, I'm really impressed with, uh, with uh, everything you have shared with us. Um, Thank you. If I, if I have to, to take uh, uh, one or two things, uh, I would say postcards, especially with, uh, uh, with uh, giving the book if anybody has or a report, because this definitely will uh, cause people to call you. Mm -hmm. So you need that, not only, okay, I, I, I just listed or just sold, that is okay, but uh, I found out that uh, sometimes there is not enough uh, response when I do this way. Mm -hmm. And um, actually this, um, this uh, food drive, it's amazing idea. It's amazing. Now we are challenged in this uh, during the COVID. But I believe even if we don't really have, uh, and if we choose one complex of townhouses, let's say 200 or whatever, uh, and we decide to send a card and invite them for this food drive, people will come and you will start learning about them. But it's definitely better the way you say to establish and to see your name, your face. Um, I don't know, I could talk and talk now <laughs> about everything you have shared. Yeah. Uh, some things I knew, you know, like uh, uh, grading the database, but uh, definitely you have uh, pulled me uh, down to, to regrade it again and to go through it. You know, I right. didn't do for some time, but uh, the value you are giving is unconditional for me. Well, great. Well, you're right. You know, regrading that database is so important, you know, and getting rid of people that you haven't talked to in years or haven't responded back to is important. Uh, and I think that uh, upgrading or grading your database is just an ever going process. You just never stop doing it. Uh, you're never. Yeah, I believe it. so. Because definitely I, I want some people to be in D and some people I want to move. And uh, it is actually a great way to reach out and to find out maybe with some people, do they have agent or you know, are they thinking to sell? It's amazing. And thank you for giving me all this information. And I will definitely start tonight to do with uh, grading the data. Good. All right. Well, we'll jump into our, our second part here. And I'll, I'll go through quicker through some of these topics here. But the next one is, is there lead conversion, right? And yes. lead conversion uh, is definitely something that is something that uh, it, it, I think is harder um, and it's actually more important in a lead generation. I think lead generation now is easy because it's easy to get people to respond. There's, it's easy to buy leads if we have to get leads. Uh, but the fortune is in the follow-up and, and that's where agents really drop the ball on things. And, and it really wasn't until I saw this, this stat, the sales stats here that I have here in front of you that really opened my eyes to how much we were missing in, in some of our follow-up. And if you look on here, 48% of salespeople never even follow up with a prospect. And I thought, who would, who, would, who would actually do that? Who would never even follow up with someone until I started giving leads out to my own agents? And if I would give leads and agents would say, hey, well, I need to get some business and you know, can you give me some leads? Okay, well, here's five leads, here's 10 leads. And then they would come back to me a week or two later and they would want more leads. I'm like, well, what happened to the leads I gave you? Well, those leads sucked. They weren't good. Okay. All right, here's five or 10 more. And then they would come back and I'm like, geez, I don't understand why, you know, why are these leads so bad where I have other agents doing a good job with them? And when I found that some of them never even followed up, someone would leave a message and they would never call again. So this shows um, sales stats. If you look at the bottom one here, 80% of sales are made on the fifth to 12 contact. So that was an eye opener for me because I knew that we had to have a better way of following up. And that's where I came up with a system called the 3412. And basically what it is, is when a lead comes in, we want to jump on that lead in the first five minutes because we know that we can convert that lead according to MIT studies. Um, you know, if you call that lead in the first five minutes, you're going to have a better chance of converting that lead than calling in an hour later. Um, it's like a hundred times worse calling in an hour later. But the way the 3412 works is that in the first uh, three days, if you could see there, yes, sir. we're calling that lead um three times right so day one we're calling it emailing and text it calling email text on day two calling email text on day three if they don't respond to us most agents are out but then we move it into the next category here where 
now we're not going to keep calling every day. We're going to call once a week for four weeks. And so today I might call on a Wednesday, you know, I might call on a Wednesday. Um, uh, next week I might call on a Saturday. Maybe I call in the morning, maybe call in the afternoon, but you switch it up. But I'm going to do that over the next four weeks. I'm going to reach out to them once a week for four weeks. If I still can't get a hold of them, do I throw the lead away? No. I'm going to reach out to them now once a month for 12 months. That's 19 touches to that lead. And our conversion rates went a lot higher and we were able to um, find people in different, because the, the reality is that uh, 80% of the leads are down the road leads, right? Someone looking online today, looking for a house, their lease that might not come up until June of next year, right? Might not come up until April, but they're already looking to see what's online. Um, so if you leave them a message, hey, I want to talk to you about a house that you want to go look at or that you inquired about, they're not that motivated to call you back. They probably won't call you back. But if it was someone that was looking to buy a house right away and they're having a hard time finding something, then more than likely they're going to call you back because their, their level of motivation is a lot higher. So um, 3, 4, 12 works really good. And I definitely highly recommend uh, everyone to do it and making sure that you're calling them so you don't get stuck in that uh, less than 80% of sales uh, factor and, and lose a lot more sales. Um, this screen right here talks about, you know, what are the things that we need to be doing as agents to be high producing agents. The one thing I learned about that is that these agents are really focused on four things. And those four things are, uh, number one, prospecting and making phone calls, right? Having a really good follow-up system, but prospecting and making phone calls. That's number one. Number two, going on listing appointments. They're really focused on being a high, high listing agent. Those are what top producers do. Uh, three, working with buyers, getting out there, working with buyers, uh, definitely, uh, is dollar productive, right? Or our hourly productive is going to be a lot higher, um, versus, you know, not working with, with buyers or sellers. And then number four is negotiating, getting deals done. There's a lot of money and we make a lot of money because of our negotiation skills to represent our buyers and sellers, to get them top dollar for their home or to have them buy a home with the least amount of money and getting a good deal on our home. So those are the four things. And if you see here, so many agents get wrapped up in administrative, marketing, service, making flyers, doing all these different things, but you don't really get paid for that. So when you talk to agents and say, yeah, I do 70, 80 hours a week and I sell five homes a year, it's because you're getting wrapped up in all the other things that don't make them money. So those are the four things we have to definitely focus on. Um, here I show a little bit on um, the video, email, and text, some of the ways that you could follow up. People love video, right? I, I do video all the time. I just did a video to one of my agents that just had her ninth year anniversary today. Sent her a video uh, right on my phone, sent it right over to her. Um, you could use Zoom, you could use Skype, you could use YouTube. There's so many different things you can do, but using video and text is something that I highly recommend uh, for you to get into. Uh, when following up on leads, following up on prospects, following up on your database, um, try it. It's definitely different. And it's one of those things that I find that uh, less than 1% of the agents out there are doing video and it's very, very strong. ISA script. So I'm not going to go too much into this, but basically if you're not good on the phones, um, you don't like making phone calls, then you need to hire someone that's going to do it because that inside sales position or that that calling position is so important to call on leads. So I would hire someone. You can you can hire someone that's um, you know a virtual assistant, right? Could be they can live anywhere now and make phone calls for you, uh, or you hire someone part time to start. And maybe they just call six, seven, eight hours a week just to start calling on some of these leads and just basic script. You know, like hey, just wanted to give you a call. Wanted to see, I saw you were on our website a few months back or a year ago. Are you still looking to buy or sell? That's it. And if they are, great, those leads get passed over to the agent and that agent, that uh, caller just still calls through them and weeding out. So you want them to take a, a list of 100 names, 200 names, but give you the top five or 10 people that are, are actually still looking to buy or sell. Uh, and then there's a script that we follow. When I was at Craig Proctor, I'll give Craig all the credit on this. Um, we had a script, it's a little messy right here, but uh, basically there's a follow-up script on the left for buyers, sellers on the right side. And then there was a script that we'd go through, you know, asking for that person and ask for the information. Uh, then we'd go through, you know, are you looking to make a move? Are you looking to um, make a move here in the next three to six months? 
Uh, do you have an agent to help you when the time is right? Uh, those type of things. So there's tons of scripts that are out there that you can get. Um, I don't like using scripts um, because I think um, scripts are, um, I don't know, I just don't like them. Even my inside salesperson, she doesn't have scripts. You go based on the feel of the client, right? Because I don't like it done to myself. I don't want to do it to prospects that I call. So a lot of times it's just good to get that person on the phone. Hey, is this a good time to talk? Yeah, well, what's, what's this about? Hey, I just wanted to call you. So I hear you on my website a few months ago. I just wanted to follow up with you, see if you're still interested in, in buying a home in Luther Forest. Um, no, we already bought. Okay, great. You know, uh, what's, where, where'd you end up buying? Click, all right, maybe they hang up or they may give you information. You know, we actually built new construction, this, that, the other thing. Um, but, you know, we were renting our old house and we don't think we're going to lease that anymore. Uh, do you sell homes? Well, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. we do sell homes. So that turns into other things that way. But um, the main thing is just picking up the phone, having conversations and treating people the way you want to be treated. Uh, we talked about pre-listing packets, the blue box. This is a lot of the information that's in the blue box. Um, some agents don't want to use the blue box because there's a cost to it, right? So a lot of times they'll do a pre-listing packet where they actually send that packet out and we put it in a folder like this. If you don't have this, I would definitely get this. This is a branding folder uh, where you can get it from um, you know, different companies. The company I use was uh, freefolders.com freefolders.com. They're called the network communication. Um, but what they did is they, I gave them a list. They're all free. I gave them a list of all the vendors that we use. They call the vendors. You know, and the vendor would put a $250 ad, $500 ad, whatever, and um, gave me a couple thousand of these folders. So it's nice. It's branded. And, um, you know, people really like them. They're very professional. So I would definitely, um, you know, have some type of pre-listing pack, either a blue box where you want to send them out in a packet like this with all really good information and you can stick them in an envelope. Okay. All right. So that is, um, that is the lead conversion. Uh, Drago, is there anything on there that you picked up that maybe you're not doing that you'd like to start doing on lead? No, no, definitely. definitely. I, um, actually a few days ago, I, uh, started uh, approaching, uh, as we call, dead leads and texted, uh, are you still thinking to buy a home? <laughs> and the guy says, yes, I reconnected and actually I'm in process of uh, uh, starting looking for him now. He's awesome. very cooperative. He knows me for two years. In that mom moment, he was thinking to rent. But I believe that um, what I didn't apply and that I would start is this, uh, your system uh, uh, 3, 4, 12. It is amazing, but I always feel, felt uncomfortable like calling three times within <laughs> 72 hours. Yeah. But I definitely, you motivated me to overcome that. It's yeah. either call or email, but three touches, as you say. Right. Yeah. Um, listing, uh, listing a uh, blue box is something that impressed me a lot. But this is this is something that is uh, professional, and you present yourself immediately. I think you have no competitors there. That's right. my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of things to do, and even this branding folder is something. I don't know. I'm in Canada. Maybe I find somebody here, but uh, maybe they they deliver. But in general. Everything is of big value. Right. Awesome. Well, that's how you convert more leads, right? Yes. Yes, that's true. Because that is the, as you say, harder part than generating the leads. Right. Right. Okay. Let's go into the next piece here, the 14-step listing process. And um, I like to compare this to um, a combination lock, right? Like if you go number, you know, go to number six, go right to number six, go past the uh, 14 twice, going left, go over to 21 on the right, the lock opens. Uh, same thing with the 14 step listing process. I feel that if you don't follow the, when you go on a listing appointment, if you don't follow the process the same way as you're opening a combination lock, you could lose a deal. Uh, an example of that would be, hey, you go to the house, you do a quick tour, you sit down, you get this great presentation, you want to go over with them. And the next thing you know, the seller says, well, what do you think? How much do you think it's worth? 
then you start, you know, going through all these paperwork and you start talking about the price. Well, we don't want to talk about price. We want to talk about the market. We talk about everything we do. Then we talk about price. But if you jump around and you don't follow the right process, um, you could turn the seller off, especially if they don't like the price that you tell them. And they're not going to hear anything they have to say about marketing, which is the value of what you bring to the table and what separates you from your competition. So it would be a shame if they weren't able to hear that because they maybe they're there physically, but mentally they're checked out because they don't like the price. So, um, you know, we, we say that cost is only an issue in the absence of value, meaning that cost, commission, or what an actual seller pays is only an issue in the absence of value. So if you don't have a listing presentation, you're not showing them all these great things that you're going to do, um, then you're just like the other agent, right? How much are you going to sell it for and what's your commission? That's it. And that's what they ask all the agents. And that's what you're going to be compared to. So you want to make sure that you're showing them the value of why um, they should use you and why you're worth the commission that you're charging, right? So we just go into a lot of bullet, you know, why listings are important, poor, uh, important, you know, obviously a lot of us know what that is. I mean, every seller prospect, I mean, we can, we can leverage our time better with listings and we can work with, you know, you, we could work with 25 listings, active listings, um, but you can't really work with 25 active buyers, right? It's just impossible, one person doing that. So we can leverage our time better. And if you market that property correctly, you should be able to get a minimum of at least one uh, lead from it. All right. Um, how we obtain listings, right? We already talked a lot about that. Personal referrals, farming, marketing. Um, you know, what do we send out prior to an appointment, right? Pre-listing market information. We send them out stuff like, um, you know, maybe an RPR, right? The realtor property resource, or we'll send them out a sheet like this, which is a one-line summary of their active, sold, and pending, right? Um, properties that are in the area. It doesn't really tell them what their value is, but it's giving them information uh, about other homes in the area. So uh, I'll go over these pretty quickly with you because a lot of them are basic, but important, right? So number one, be on time. You definitely want to get to the home five, 10 minutes early. Now, you, you don't want to be knocking on the door five or 10 minutes early, but you want to at least be in the neighborhood um, so that you could show up and be at their doorstep right on time. Um, uh, I learned that the hard way because I've had a lot of uh, sellers say to me, uh, the reason why they didn't go with other agents is because that agent was late. They never called, uh, showed up 15 minutes and didn't really have any, um, you know, remorse about being late, those type of things. And um, so being on time is very important. The reason for that is because there's a correlation between punctuality and, and integrity. And you got to make sure that um, you're punctual, especially on a business uh, dealing like this, um, you know, these people are nervous, right? They're maybe lived in the same home for 30, 40 years. If you just show up late, uh, you had a two o'clock appointment, they're already looking for you at 1.30. 1.45, they're pacing, they're looking out the window. You know, by two o'clock or five after, they're upset. They, they can't believe that you're not there and they're really getting upset. So um, you want to make sure you're on time. So that's number one. Number two, knock on the door, walk in home, introduce yourself. Shake their hand uh, if appropriate. I know sometimes at different cultures that's not appropriate, um, so you'll you'll have to deal with that uh, on your own pace. But um, you know, always look them in the eye, shake their hand. I had someone say to me, "I didn't go with that agent because when he shook my hand, uh, he didn't look me in the eye." Right? There's all kinds of different things that you hear out there. Uh, and then I have a laptop, so where can I set my laptop up? Where can I set my iPad up? Whatever. I always ask. I don't just take it for granted and go sit down at their dining room table. And I always ask them, where would you like me to, you know, set this up? I don't want to sit in Big Papa's chair, right? I want to make sure that um, I'm giving them the, the information, but I'm also uh, asking them for permission of where I can sit. Um, number three, turn on the laptop, make a little bit of small talk as you're doing that. Um, you know, I may talk about the neighborhood, geez, I drove by the school or I had a friend of mine that lived in this neighborhood, whatever this small talk may be. And then number four would be ask the seller for a quick tour, keyword quick, tour of their home. And always, always, always bring a notepad, right? And that was a video I just did recently uh, to agents out there is that you always want to have a notepad, even if it's a piece of paper, you fold like this and you have a pen handy. You want to make sure you're going around taking notes because I made that mistake. I've lost um, listings because I didn't have notepad. And I actually had one listing that, you know, when I didn't get the listing, which I was very shocked, I called her and I said, you know, why, 
what happened here? What, what can I have done differently? And she goes, you know what, Willie, just the other agents seem a lot more interested in my property and more excited. Uh, and I go, what do you mean? She goes, well, you know, she actually went around and wrote down all the notes of all of her improvements that we've done over the last 10 years in her home. So that's when it went off. And I go, all right, definitely ever, and even if I can't read it, I want to make sure I have a notepad that I have. So that's number four. Number five, make a mental note of negative selling points. You never want to just go out there and, you know, within the first five or 10 minutes of meeting them, going through a tour, already ripping our house apart. Uh, if it smells, if it has pet odors, if it's, you know, next to train tracks, whatever, just keep some of those to yourself. Maybe jot down a couple of notes on the bottom that you can refer to. And once you build that rapport with them, but you definitely want to keep mental notes uh, or negative mental notes to yourself. And if you want to talk about positives, you could do that. Hey, great family room. Wow, these room sizes are awesome. I uh, love the crown molding in this room. Those type of things. Definitely want to do that. Because again, remember the seller is nervous. They don't know what's going on. They just met you for their first time. And the last thing they want you doing is tearing down your property in their home. Um, remember, selling a home is very emotional, right? And we're going in there, you know, it's our business, right? So we don't have that emotion that's tied into it. So you have to make sure that you uh, sense that and, and keep that to yourself. Number six, I just mentioned, compliment them on a condition of the home, let them know they have a great home and there'll be no problem selling their home, right? Should be no problem selling this home. Uh, that's important, number six. Uh, I learned that uh, over the years and I actually picked it up from a mentor of mine because um, they're worried no matter what. So who's gonna want my house, right? That's their biggest fear, the fear of rejection. So when you're going through that and say, you know what, we got a beautiful home here, you're gonna have no problem selling it. You can just see them just like, really, you think so? Absolutely, I know so. Now, when we do the listing presentation, we're going to go through, right? It's going to sell if it's priced right, it's marketed correctly, and it's in great condition. But going through that actual walkthrough and telling them that is, is key. Number seven, sit down at the table where you were, uh, had your laptop set up. Just start talking to them. Get a pen and paper out. What are your moving plans? Um, what's your time frame here? Do you need to sell first before you buy? Do you need to buy first before you sell? Um, just some key questions there you want to ask them. And um, so that's number seven. And that really sets it up. And there's been times that I'm like, you know what? You're not ready to sell your house. You need to go find something that you're going to live in first. I changed that listing appointment into a buyer appointment. And we went out looking at properties first uh, because a lot of times they don't get excited and they're not going to be motivated to sell. They don't know where they're going. Uh, number eight, I, you know, I, I just tell them that there's three very important parts and elements in selling their home and that's condition, marketing, and price. Um, you need extensive marketing, get your home sold. We've got to make sure it's priced correctly. We've got to make sure it's in great condition. Uh, and then that's where I segment over into the listing presentation, right? So I'm going to show you that on the next, next segment here uh, uh, on the presentation on my listing. And we'll go through those pretty quick. Um, when I'm done with the listing presentation, I'll ask them, hey, now that you had an opportunity to take a look at the listing presentation and what we, um, you know, how we feel that we set ourselves uh, apart from the competition, um, that's when I go into ask them any questions. Do you have any questions on any marketing? No, nope. no, nope. marketing was really good. It's really a lot more than anyone else showed us. Great. All right, great. Then I'll go ahead and pull out this uh, cost market analysis, the CMA summary, which I showed you here, all right, which is going to give me homes that are active. They're going to give me homes that are pended and, act and sold properties. And you don't want to come up with, you know, 15,000 homes. You want to get maybe four or five homes that sold. Um, so that's when I actually go through and I explain to them the criteria. And how I explain it to them is the number 10 here. Active listings. These are homes that um, we're going to be competing with. These active listings, uh, we sometimes refer to them as fantasy land, right? A house is worth 500000 but the people put it on the market for six fifty. dollars Fantasy land. You can put whatever you want on it. So don't worry about what your neighbor is listing your home for. Um, we want to know what it sold for. Pending listings, these are homes that are still under contract. We don't know what they sold at yet, but we know that the last price that they had on it uh, was 375, and that's when it actually sold. It started at 420, but when they got the price of 375, they actually got a contract. So that's important information for us to know. Uh, but sold, this is reality, right? These homes officially closed, and this is the best way to determine market value for your home. And this is really all the bank appraisers want in the banks. They only want closed sales. So 
I explain to them how that CMA summary works. I select number 11. I select four or five homes that best match their criteria, same like kind quality home as theirs. Um, we go over that. And not only do I go over that on paper, but I actually have it on my iPad or on my laptop. I'll actually go through my MLS and show them all inside photos. And the reason I do that is because a lot of times they're like, geez, you know, that house was really nice that we just saw next door. I didn't know they had a new kitchen. I didn't know they had a finished basement. And, you know, they're looking at their home, you know, 25 years, same, same kitchen. Uh, wow, all the bathrooms are all renovated. Look how neat and clean, and pristine this home is. And then they start comparing it to themselves, right? So it's good for us to know that you can't, you, you're not going to get that off a one-liner, black and white, of what, you know, 123 Cherry Lane looks like. You want to make sure that you're showing them uh, those photos so they can start comparing it or not their mind what their home is worth. So that's number 11, right? And we go over days on market, go over the list of sales ratio, all that stuff. So once we go through that and I show them prices and everything else, this is a key one, circle it, number 12, I asked a question. Now, after looking over these recent home sales, we could see a range of homes similar to yours uh, between 375 and four and a quarter. Where do you feel your home should be priced based on these current home sales? And then watch. I shut up. And you'll see the, you know, if it's a husband and wife looking at each other or partners or whatever, and, you know, you know, you'll see their little minds go off and say, geez, now, before you came here, I was thinking like 450, but now that I'm looking at this, it's probably closer to 400, maybe a little bit less. Yeah, based on what uh, we have on here, based on the clothes, yeah, you're, you're probably right. Right, so I let them self-determine that versus me coming out of the gate and saying, oh, your home, what's it worth? Oh, um, it's probably worth about 400,000. And they're looking at you like, what? Are you kidding me? So you want to make sure you follow that process of self-elimination of, of, and, and self-discovery of what their actual home is worth. Um, and once we get to that, right, after I ask them that question, I never give them the price first. Every once in a while, though, and I know what you're going to say, every once in a while, I'll give someone, I'll say, Willie, you're the professional. You tell me what my home is worth. I just go right back to this. I say, well, you know what? It's really not up to me or you or, you know, it's really your home is only worth what a buyer's willing to pay. And based on the information here, same like kind quality home, square footage, everything else. It looks like it's between 375 and 425. That's what, what it looks like, right? So it's in that range. So I give them a range. I don't even give them an exact price. I give them a range. So then I turn it back. So based on that, what do you think it's worth? You know, where do you think in that range it should start? In the middle or the higher end? Eh, probably in the middle because that one has a new kitchen. That one has a finished basement. That one has a new roof. And my needs, all those things. Okay. So they start discounting in their mind that way. Um, so once we determine, okay, it's 399, probably somewhere around 400,000. Okay, great. Then that's when I go to number 12. I ask the question. Now, after looking at all these, uh, no, I'm sorry. That's not the question I asked. Whoever did that. Um, I go into 13. Based on a conversation with the seller, determine um, what they feel they should receive for their home and what they would like to list it for, right? So now we come to the agreement. Yeah, probably 399. Keep it under that 400,000. Good. Uh, 14 is in, in critical. You have to ask for the business. You can't just kind of leave it there or, you know, say, forget it. So I said, after, you know, agreeing on a price at home, I said, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, we went over all of our aggressive marketing, what we do here at Marina Real Estate Group. Uh, we feel very confident that we can get top dollar for your home with the least amount of hassles based on our team and our support. Are you ready to get your home listed today with us? And again, I shut up. And usually at this point, they'll say, yeah. You know what, let's get, let's get going, let's get the paperwork out. Awesome, right, we get into the paperwork. Or sometimes they'll say, you know what, um, we definitely want to list with you, but um, you had mentioned that, you know, we really should paint our kids' rooms, um, you know, from that black ceiling and, and uh, the poster tape all over the place. So we we'll probably need about two weeks um, to take care of that and we'll list it then. So I said, okay, great. So in two weeks, right, or December 15th, uh, you think you'd be ready to put it on the market? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, great. So why don't we go ahead and let me start pre
pre-marketing your property for you. So we can start looking for the perfect buyer for your home. And um, I just need to you know, complete some of this paperwork, take about 10 or 15 minutes. And I go right into the listing paperwork. I go right into the contract and I'll actually date the policy, or I'm sorry, not the policy, insurance mine. I'll date the contract out to December 15th or December 10th or whatever the date that they think uh, that they agree to. And uh, I'll start pre-marketing their home. Now that file just stays in my, in my file. I mean, I'm not uh, putting it on the MLS or anything like that. But the point here is that they're gonna go to work the next day, right? They're gonna talk to their neighbor the next day. And they're gonna say, you know what? I met with my realtor last night. My house is worth 400,000. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna sell, I'm gonna list it with Willie uh, in a couple weeks. And that's when everyone and their mother comes out with um, being a, 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 a real estate agent, right? There could be, uh, my cousin does real estate, the guy I work with does real estate, et cetera. And what you don't want is you don't want to call that lead in two weeks or worse yet, them call you and say, hey, Willie, hey, thank you so much. You're never going to believe this. Uh, I went to uh, work and the guy I work with, he actually does real estate part time and he's going to list my house for 4%. So, you know, money's important to us and, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go with him. Um, or someone at work or my neighbor or whatever, you don't, you get it, right? So what doesn't happen though, is that if you sign something already and that agent calls that person and says, hey, I see you're looking to list your house. You met with William Miranda, did you sign anything? And they say, yeah, I already, I already listed, I already signed it. That agent normally is gonna walk away. Uh, but if they say, no, I haven't signed anything, well, he's coming back in two weeks, you're done, right? You're dead in the water. So make sure to try to get those free listings if you can. I know some people can't um, in their states, and I understand that, um, but I always try to get some type of commitment from them up front where I'm going to go ahead and pre-list their property. So that's the 14-step listing process. So Draga, anything uh, you picked up on that that... Um, I know you've been through that piece too, so that might No, be. no, the, 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 yes, I was on, uh, I'm on your weekly sessions. Actually, I really like uh, the way how you um, uh, showed us the process of self-discovering, that uh, we are not the ones that, uh, that are putting the price, but they come with that. And in the end, um, I believe that you, you have given us everything, every step and explained it very well. So that definitely for me personally will be some steps that I, I will uh, definitely, I have to sit and uh, rearrange and apply, but great value. Okay. All right, good. Now, were you part of our listing presentation, the training? No. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go over and uh, share with you guys my, my listing presentation on here for this next segment. Okay. Sorry, I was muted. 
<laughs> no worries. <laughs> Let me go back to the top of that because you didn't hear what I said, but I'll have to cut that out. Okay. All right, so listing presentation. Cost is the only issue in the absence of value. We talked about that. Our listing presentation, I always make sure that everyone has that. Um, you got to show value. You got to show value to all your listings. Set yourself apart from the competition. But we talk about the big three, and the big three are condition, marketing, and price. Condition, your home has to be in showroom condition at all times. Marketing, that's why you hire us, to market it to the world, to get as many eyes of the buyers on it. And then price, this is the biggest mistakes that sellers make, is not pricing it right. Actually, pricing it too high could be a negative to you and actually cost you money, not uh, get more money in your pocket. Because if a home sits on the market too long, the seller automatically thinks, or the buyer automatically thinks, there's something wrong with that property. So we go over the big three. We talk to them about the difference of uh, our approach versus other brokerages that are out there. And we, uh, we foster a team approach, right? We let them know that, you know, when you hire me, you hire my whole team of professionals. And, you know, most agents operate like I did many years ago as a one person, you know, one, one, one person band, right? Where I'm doing everything. I'm doing all the admin work. I'm doing all the flyers. I'm doing the marketing, the service work, the sales. And, you know, it was never good when I had an out of town buyer that I had to go work with and someone's calling on your, your home for sale, but I can't get back to them until the next day uh, because I'm out with a, with a buyer all day. So um, that's how most agents operate. We, we foster more of the whole team approach and this is where most professionals work, right? Your dentist, <clears throat> your attorney, your accountant, um, you know, your dentist is not calling you to, uh, to, to confirm your appointment. Your dentist is not, you know, cleaning your teeth. You want that dentist to do root canals. You want them to do crowns. You want them to do the major work. And that's what we want to do. I want to make sure that I'm focused on selling your home and marketing your home to the right buyer, not sitting there doing all the other things, putting lock boxes and creating signs for your home. Um, so I, I talked to him about our leadership, my, my, both my brother and I. Uh, I talked to him a little bit about me, the books that I wrote, some of the things that I do, some of the things some of the you know, engagements where I speak and that type of stuff. I talk about our team and our support. I just kind of run through a lot of what they do. So in other words, when I list your house, all of these people here know who you are, uh, know your address and know the priority because we talk about your listing every week and they all have a hand in your listing somewhere. Um, snapshot of our team. We show them where we rank amongst other companies. Uh, we had a couple of awards that we won, best places, uh, best of the best in the local newspaper. We talk about our charities and what we give to. Um, and then we go into, you know, our, our feedback system, right? Um, and every agent in my MLS has this, but none, a lot of them don't express the benefits of it. And sellers really want to know this. Like that's their biggest, biggest complaint about agents is communication. So we want to be able to show them uh, the communication and why we use showing times is one of our ways of doing that. Uh, we want to show them the stats that they get, you know, if the buyer thinks it's too much or if, um, you know, it didn't show well or how it showed, we want to make sure that we show that. Uh, we want to talk to them about our, our uh, answering service 24-7. Um, so if someone calls on a Friday night or on a Saturday morning, your phone, your call is going to be answered by a live person. It's going to then take that information and send it to me directly. Um, and it's also going to send it to my assistant so that we're able to get back to that lead right away. Where in years past, I used to go to a voicemail in the office and sometimes wouldn't be picked up till Monday morning. And we would lose that buyer because then they went and saw another property and put an offer in. So these are little things, Mr. Seller, that we want to make sure that when we list your property, that we're giving you A-plus service and that we're going to be able to capture all the leads that come through on your home. We spent a lot of money in marketing last year uh, or this year, we spent 250,000 was our budget. We'll probably go a little bit over that this year because of you know, COVID and some of the different things that we had to implement uh, with virtual tours and those type of things. But $250,000 is a big budget. We spend a lot of money in the marketing. Most agents don't have that capital if they're working for another company uh, to go up and do that. And a lot of the companies are not uh, putting that much money into uh, advertising of their agents' homes. 
uh, we talk about where buyers come from, right? 50% from internet, 28% from realtor to realtor contact, yard signs, friends, family members, et cetera. But only 1% or less come from newspaper print ad. We talk about our relocation services, like I mentioned before. We talk about, you know, why leading real estate companies of the world that we're affiliated with outsell all the other competitors, uh, Keller Williams, Caldwell Banker, uh, Remax, some of the other ones that are on there because of this affiliation and because you come with us, you'll be able to receive the benefits of that. Uh, we talk about military and the move. We have a lot of veterans in our area. So we like to be able to offer them uh, discounts on when move, when buying or selling a property. Uh, we're uh, ranked best of the best of Zillow. So we want to make sure that they understand that we're paying $10,000 a month just in that feature. Uh, the different syndication that we have with our New York State MLS, our yard signs, their text writer signs. We want to let them know that this is technology that we use to capture people's names. You know, before we used to put flyers in a little flyer boxes on someone's lawn. People would take the sheets out. We never knew who it was, who was taking them out. Now when they text us and they want the information, all the information comes, the picture of their home, all the taxes, all the information. But we also get a text to us saying who just texted us so we could follow up with that phone call. Um, Marketing is very important. You know, we have a video media specialist that does a lot of our videography or drones or photos. And you can see here a couple examples of some different drone photos and how that looks a lot better than just someone standing in a driveway taking a picture of the front of the house. Uh, we have Matterport. Uh, so we want to make sure, especially in this time of COVID, that uh, we limit the number of un unqualified um, or maybe un uh, serious buyers come into your home, but we want to walk them through the Matterport. And so this is something that the buyers do. They click on themselves just like this. They can walk through, they can walk through any level of the home. They can zero in on a certain room and they can actually walk through just like they were walking through your home. So this is something that we provide on all of our listings now. And we want to make sure that you get this as well. Most agents, Mr. Seller, Mrs. Seller, uh, won't do this because either they don't have the technology uh, or they don't want to pay the extra money for it. That's part of our $250,000 a year budget is paying for technology and marketing service like this. Uh, we go over some of the brochures. These are also digital. Uh, we do a lot of stuff on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and also YouTube. Uh, all of this stuff will be done the day we launch your property. Uh, we'll have a YouTube um, video for your home. We'll have a Facebook post that we'll be sending out and boosting it out to all people in the area uh, that are looking to buy or sell a home because we know is, Facebook is pretty smart. They know who's been on Zillow, who's been on uh, Realtor.com, who's been looking for a house, and that's who we target. Uh, and then also Instagram. Uh, we do virtual staging. You know, I noticed that you had a couple of rooms that were empty. We can actually fill them with furniture virtually. So we don't have to bring anything in. It's not going to cost you any additional money for that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do that with our virtual staging company, as you just saw there, right? Uh, open houses. Um, you know, again, you know, open houses are tough right now. Uh, we do virtual open houses, uh, but we also have active uh, top agent emails that we send out. So if you notice, there's 2,900 agents that we actually email blast. Uh, every time we put a home on the market that we could send your information out to. Um, that red circle represents over 40,000 buyers that we have in waiting that are in our database that have come to our website for some information on a home. Uh, we match your home, your price range, your county, your school district, to the people that were looking uh, in that database. And we may match up two, three, 400 home, uh, buyers and we blast out to them and then follow up on the ones that open up uh, the information. Uh, we have our guarantee sale program where we actually buy someone else's home if they trade up and buy your home. And that's a full system that's probably a whole other call, but it uh, works very good. And it's just like trading in your car. Um, so in other words, you list with me. If someone is looking to buy your home, we'll actually step in and buy their home. So 80% of the buyers that are out there have a home to sell. We're able to remove that contingency and attract 100% of them with this program. And some people may say, well, how does it work, blah, blah, blah. And I just basically say, we buy them at 90% of market value, 
right? Just like if you were trading your car, it's worth 10, but you go and trade it in, maybe they only give you 8,000. Uh, same thing here. If a home is worth uh, 300,000, then we're going to give them 270, right? We're going to give them 90% of that and uh, as an offer, but they have to list their property with us for at least 90 days uh, before we actually buy their home. So uh, sellers really like that, that we're able to do that. Uh, we show them all of our testimonials. Um, we give them a recap of all the different things that we do to set up sell from the competition. And we just let them know that you can see how these systems are gonna create more demand for your property uh, and sell your home faster and for more, more money. Uh, I asked them if they have any questions in marketing. Then we go into pricing, right? Remember we talked about pricing. This is when we convert to that, pricing it right. And I tell them, you know, 90% of any great marketing print plan is price. So the goal here, here is to get your home listed around that market value range. And if you notice here, if you go below it or at or just below it, you get about 75% of the potential buyers for your home. It's a pretty good chunk. But if we just did it 10% more, so an example would be if your home is worth 400,000, but we go and list it for 450, now we're cutting it down about 30% of the potential buyers. This is where we get into trouble. This is where we get low showings. This is where we get people saying, what's wrong with this home? So we wanna make sure that we focus on listing your home and pricing it right, right out of the gate versus pricing it too high. Okay, what do you think, Draga? Excellent. So that's our listing presentation. Um, depending on questions and stuff like that, we usually can get through that within a half hour. Um, but it's a very powerful tool um, that agents, um, you know, unfortunately, don't see the value sometimes and, under, and don't understand why they don't get listings and they lose listings. And a lot of it's because you're not really showing the value. And when you show them this and you show them on a computer, they want that, right? I, I want that for my house. The last agent didn't show me that. I want that. Um, what are, what, what's one or two things on that, Draga, that you really picked up that you would like to implement out of that section? Actually, I uh, really like that uh, you have touched everything. And I really like the um, approach that, because uh, I usually go with uh, paper, but uh, I realized because I'm using virtual staging, I'm using Matterport, it's different when you just show it on the paper when you show on computer. That right. is definitely big one for me that I will implement uh, um, having uh, presentations and uh, and um, uh, it is really everything is complete. You, you did everything. You did, uh, I usually leave some testimonials, uh, I can still do that, but I really like that you you have touched anything, uh, like uh, uh, even uh, buying the home of potential buyers and whatever, that uh, I don't know if I can do it, but in general, uh, you have touched if it's vacant home, if you do staging, if you do virtual staging, everything. I mean, you, you nail it and uh, presenting the whole team and the marketing efforts and that you, you are uh, focused on the big thing is, it's really powerful. That's yeah, the reason hard. you are the best. <laughs> well, it's hard for them not to list with us, right? Because when they see all that, you know, Correct. Ask, you know, and I go a little deeper on some of those, like when I show that 40,000 buyers, mm -hmm. I'll say, you know, did the last agent show you the list of their buyers? And nobody did. No, right? That's powerful. I got over 40,000 buyers in my database. I'm going to market to them. And that's what they want, right? They want us to bring in a buyer for their home. So uh, that is uh, enough. Them. That is uh, just only that action will bring them the buyer, definitely. Right. Yeah. So, okay, so that's the listing process. So we'll wrap up these next two here. And we'll go into transaction process. Um, and the transaction process is pretty pretty good from a standpoint of, you know, making sure that you don't screw it up, right? You work so hard prospecting, getting them on the phone, making an appointment, following up with them, going to their home, presenting to them, competing against other agents. You did all of these things and now you got the listing, you got the paperwork. You don't want to mess it up. So you want to make sure that you deliver a really good service to them. You give them everything that you told them you're going to do. And the way you do that is by having a process. And uh, we have a transaction process. 
you know, here's one of the, the slides that we use that uh, when we fill out, when we meet with a customer, we're filling all their information, their cell phone information or emails. We're filling out, you know, making sure that we order the signs and making sure that we have all the showing time stuff and all the contracts, the survey, the deed, taxes, all that's all on here so that we make sure that uh, we're giving them good service, right? And I always talk about the example of uh, McDonald's, right? McDonald's is one of the best franchises in the world run by a bunch of teenage kids. Why is that? It's because they have processes, they have systems. And this is why McDonald hamburger tastes the same here in Albany, New York, than it does in California, right? Uh, it's because they have a process, they follow it. You know, and I know, because I worked at McDonald's when I was a kid, um, they train you exactly how things need to be done so you're consistent on everything you do. And you can do that when you have a good system. So, you know, it's, it's easy if you only have one or two listings, right? But what happens when you have 10 listings, 15 listings? Uh, you have to have a good process. So we go over a home, a home timeline with our sellers to explain to them. Now here's us listing your house today and here's us closing on it and all the different things. So we walk them through these bullet points uh, to make sure that they understand where we're gonna list your house. If we're gonna do showings, I mean, open houses. Um, you know, once they get a contract, they have to get, you know, an attorney and then we have to do home inspections and, you know, the buyer has a lender, et cetera, et cetera. So these are all things that are gonna take place throughout the home sale timeline. So we wanna make sure that we show them that and go over all of our checklists, make sure you give them good transactional service through, uh, talk to them about what to start doing two months prior to moving day, from you know getting uh, moving companies to come out, giving estimates to um, you know, canceling a newspaper. I mean, it, it really drives it, drills it down. People really appreciate that. Uh, we have a sheet, what to expect your first week with us, right? From after you sign the listing agreement, to the photos, to the lock boxes, to you know, all the information on where it's gonna be. We want them to know and expect that within 72 business hours, it's usually when all of this stuff is gonna take place for you. In our top producer, and this is where my administrative people work from, uh, we actually have these plans, as you can see. And the best part, none of them have my name in them, uh, to the right, but you could see a lot of them you know, has everything from creating the file to reviewing the file to ordering the signs uh, to updating the showing time, um, all the weekly follow up. So you see seven days, 14 days, 21 days, every seven days you have follow up that's built in there. So that in that six month process, um, we were very, very consistent on the service that we delivered uh, to the seller. Um, and then we have sheets once a contract goes under contract with the buyer, have the same for them. And we have a, a process for when it goes pending, which is important because we wanna make sure that we get copies of the check and the deal pending and make sure that we take it out. Like we don't wanna keep sending listings out to a buyer if they're under contract, right? We don't wanna confuse them. So we have a plan that as soon as it goes under contract, we take them off our automated service of them receiving, receiving that, right? We put in the MLS, we pend it, we updated in our in our CRM. So all of these different things are done and put in there. Um, then once that happens, when it actually closes, we actually have a plan for that, right? Um, and this is all out of a lot of pain that I went through. You know, pain is when you're sitting there, you closed on a house three weeks ago and you drive to work and you see big sign panel and the sign out on your front lawn of your office. Right, because the buyer got upset, you never came and picked it up, and finally just took it upon himself to throw the sign in the back of their truck and throw it on your front lawn. Uh, or worse yet, show up with a lockbox with the actual handle and everything on it and throw it on your front counter. Um, and it's because we didn't have the proper systems in place to make sure that we went back out there. And it costs you a lot of money, right? Lockboxes are not cheap. So you want to make sure that these are all being done. You want to make sure it closes out in MLS. You want to make sure that. Um, you know, commissions are paid, et cetera. So very important. Uh, closing gifts. And um, I think this is something that, um, you know, a lot of agents want to do, don't do, don't know what to do. Uh, the best thing I could say is that closing gifts are, um, you want to make it more emotional 
versus promotional, right? Emotional meaning you want it to be something with their name, something that's more emotional to them, more custom to them versus promotional where I'm giving them, you know, a free spatula with Miranda Real Estate Group on it or, you know, a Yeti mug with Miranda Real Estate Group on it. You want to give them something that's more emotional. So we like giving out these uh, closing gifts where we, it's called snapfish.com or snapfish books, where we actually give them a, a, an actual picture book of their home, but all the inside photos of their home. And I've had a lot of people cry at closings uh, when I give this to them and it's you know, $20, $25 closing gift. Uh, that's all it costs, but they really have a lot of value and they're going to keep this uh, probably for the rest of their lives because they have a lot of memories in that home because it's so emotional. And I write a little note in there, as you can see on the left, appreciate the opportunity to sell your home. Um, and uh, I thought you'd enjoy this for many years to come. Keep in touch, Willie. I put my business card in there and the picture of their home, right? So they really love that. It's a great closing gift. Uh, here's more of a promotional, like the Cutco knife, right? My name on it. That's great. People like it, but it's promotional. Um, this one down here, the Tiptons, right? Home sweet home. That's more emotional. Uh, here's a cutting board you can get. So those are some closing gifts there. So that's the transaction process, making sure that everything that you do um, after you earn their business uh, has consistent flow so that um, by giving them good service, you're going to get repeat and referral business. And that's no different than, um, it's no different than going to a restaurant, right? Looks good, great advertisement. You go, you sit down, you have a great meal, uh, but, then, but then you're waiting around and had to ask three times for a check. Uh, that gets you really upset. Now you'll never go there again because of that one process was broke. So um, what you think, Draga? Uh, again, you know, Willie, you impressed me. I really love these check uh, boxes, uh, transaction process, actually. Um, uh, and nothing is left uh, not to be done or just to be missed because even one, one thing missed, as you say, can create disaster or, you know, uh, lose the opportunity for future. Uh, I, I really, that is a lot of work that you have prepared and uh, especially having the team and they have to take care of each step of the process. It is very valuable. Additionally, I really like the way how you uh, prepare these uh, closing gifts. As you say, it's more emotional than, you know, that you, how much does it cost, but uh, value for life. And that shows that you are a humble person and that you really uh, cherish your clients who gave you trust. Yeah, and you know, you do a great job for them. And if you do a great job for them, one hand wash the other, they always take care of you. And that's kind of where we're going with number six here, uh, the Excellent. last topic, which is repeat and referral business, right? Mm -hmm. um, people will still come back to us, right? Just like a restaurant owner. They're going to keep coming back more and more because they want that good service. They want that, that feel of um, appreciation. So, all right, well, let's jump into the last segment on here, uh, repeat and referral business. And, you know, basically when I coach agents and when I hire agents to our team, there's two types of agents, right? And I'm looking for a certain type of agent. That agent is what we call a career agent. Transactional agents are agents that come and go through our business um, that, um, and as you can see here, uh, tend to waste time, don't have good time management skills. Um, career agents use their time efficiently, right? They have a schedule they work with. Uh, they understand that, you know, their job is getting up every day, getting dressed and going to the office and doing certain things. Um, transactional agents tend to spend or, or have poor spending habits. They don't know what you're spending. They're just throwing a lot of money up on things. Career agents really know their numbers. They value, um, they value education. They value um, their numbers, and they do a good job investing back into their business. Uh, transactional agents don't have client loyalty because they didn't really do a good job with them, right? So they don't, they don't really earn their trust. They didn't earn their loyalty, but. With career agents, because we did such a great job and because we keep in touch with them 
even after the transaction, uh, we receive repeat and referral business from them. Uh, transactional agents are lead squirrels with low conversion rates, like give me, give me, give me more leads, right? Like I mentioned before, I had some agents that just wanted leads, but they didn't really want to call them. Uh, they just want to cherry pick the best ones, and then they would leave everything there. Uh, where career agents have a systematic database with higher conversion rates, right? They're doing a 3, 4, 12. Um, they're sending out mailings. They're sending out emails, texting old leads, um, keeping in touch with those people because they know eventually they're going to convert. Uh, transactional agents tend to be what we call ripe and rotten. <laughs> um, they don't seek additional training and education. Um, you know, it's like being on today's call here, like even on, or on my Wednesday calls or all the training that we do, some agents really need to be on those calls, but they're not. And it's because they feel they already know it. Uh, I don't need it. And they become ripe and rotten because um, they're not advancing themselves. They're not growing. Where uh, career agents are green and growing. They're always seeking more information. They're always looking to do a little bit better. And I have a lot of agents in my company that have been with me 5, 10, 15 years. And they still come to every training because they want to know and they want to keep learning uh, more and more. Um, and then the last one on here is that transactional agents, unfortunately, have low profit margins and tend to be more burnout because they're always going, going, going. And they're never getting any traction because they're not getting the repeat and referral business. Where career agents have higher profit margins and have a successful business because they know their numbers. They get repeat and referral business. They manage their time correctly. And they have a successful business because of it. So um, look on this chart and you have to really ask yourself, what agent do I want to be? And what are some things that I need to do more of to be a career agent versus a transactional agent? Uh, we have an 18 touch system. How do we stay in touch with our, our clients? Um, 12 newsletters a year, making sure that we send out um, newsletters to them. And you know, we have a sample of one here that Trish put my packet. Um, so this goes out and basically it's a paper newsletter. It's addressed to the people and then we have information about uh, our book and then also a client testimonial. On the front of it though, it'll say, you know, what's up with Willie? Talk about my month, talk about what I'm doing with my children, where I'm traveling. Not much of that going on right now. Um, goes over a little bit about the insurance, goes over what we're doing for charities. I even have in the kitchen with Sherry Miranda, which is my wife, who actually puts a, menu, uh, a, a recipe every month, uh, one of you know, our favorite recipes, and she puts that in there. So that, um, that goes out, goes in people's mailboxes, and you know, we'll put stats of what's going on in the area, uh, souls and stuff like that. This one doesn't have it, but most of them we do. Um, and it's good information. So people like the newsletter stays top of mind, stays in front of them. Yeah. It does it cost a little bit of money. It does, but we pick up a lot of referrals from it. Cause not only is it going to my database, right? My VIPs and my A's, but it's also going to, um, my geographic farm, uh, that I like to work. So I like it cause it's near my house. I'm walking in neighborhoods. People know who we are when my wife and I are walking cause they see it. They actually will comment on her recipes. Hey, I like that. I like this. I like that. So she thinks she's Rachel Ray a lot of times walking in the neighborhoods. Uh, we sent out four, four postcard cards a year, right? Just giving them information what's going on in the neighborhood, the market, top 10 sales in the area every quarter. Uh, and then two texts or calls uh, with either a birthday call and an annual call to say, hey, uh, Joe, can you believe it's been five years since we Sold you at home, how's things going? How's the house, how's the family? Great, if I can do anything for you, let me know. Um, here's some information on other homes that have sold or here's an RPR, give me some values of what your home is worth today in a range. Um, but you know, I really uh, appreciate your, your referrals, any business, so if you know of anyone looking to buy or sell, I'd be more than happy to take care of them. So thank you, have a great day, right? It's a five minute conversation. Uh, but if you do that every year with your clients, you stay in touch with them, they're always going to come back to you. They're always going to uh, refer you people. And you may not get one on that phone call, but it's funny how 30 days later, you get a call, right? Two weeks later, you get a call. Because you're top of mind. Now they're going to work. Now they hear someone saying they just got married and they need to buy a house. 
and who are you using for a real estate agent? Hey, call my friend, call my agent. And that's how you get referrals. Um, there's, you know, just a copy of our newsletter. I kind of showed it to you in black and white there, but there's the color version of it that we send out. And then we have a client close plan. Actually, I'm gonna be going over this tomorrow on our masterclass. This is important. Um, and if every agent did this, they would get more repeat and referral business. And the client close plan, I actually got this from a very good mentor of mine, Rick DeLuca, actually shared this with me many years ago. And you know, most agents, if they even do go to the closing, you go to a closing, you get a check, shake hands, hug, kiss, whatever. And, and you never talk to people. Here you just spent two months, three months, five months working with these people. And at the closing, it's like a funeral. You never see them again, never talk to them again. Don't even send them stuff, right? And it's a big problem. So you wanna make sure that you adopt this client close plan. And um, the way this works is that day one, in other words, day one after the closing, like close today, tomorrow's day one, I'm calling that person up. Hey, Sally, how Joe, hi, Mary, whatever. How did things go last night, you know? How was the first night in your new home? Great, you know, blah, 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 blah. Okay, great. Hey, I mentioned, you know, you mentioned at the closing, or I remember we mentioned that walkthrough, you were looking for a roofer, and I happened to uh, come across two or three names of some roofers that I'd like to recommend you. Would it be okay if I text them over to you or email them to you? Sure, great. Um, and then I'll send a personal note out to them. And then usually I'll call, um, 30 days later, right? Um, but day seven, uh, if I gave them someone or they needed information right away, uh, then I'll call to see if they called or if they had any problems. Were you able to get a hold of Jerry and Sue or whoever? Uh, sometimes I'll call them, but if not, usually day 30, I'll call them again. Hey, just wanna check in with you 30 days. Usually by this time, you know, people find different things wrong with the house or, you know, different things. That, how, how's everything going? Well, you're never gonna believe it. This happened, that happened, whatever. So we try to help them, try to use our vendors to uh, help them. And you know, I'll refer them two or three people. Send them another personal. Um, and uh, I like to send personal notes out to them. Uh, day, and then once a year thereafter, on day 365, I call them on the anniversary, check-in call. Uh, and then I send them a personal note, usually with a small gift. Sometimes I'll send them a you know, ice cream to a local ice cream place that we have, these free coupons, uh, or I'll send them a Dunkin' Donuts card or a Starbucks card, depending on what their favorite things are. Um, and then every year thereafter, it's in my follow-up to follow up with them every year. Now, I might not talk to them on the same day they bought it, right? But I try to get it in that same month or same week to say, hey, can you believe it's been three years, five years, 10 years? I had one the other day, it was 13 years. Um, so those are the um, type of calls you want to do with the client close plan. And this has proven to be a very successful plan for me because on day one, sometimes, I mean, I had one person that um, the seller didn't leave the right keys and none of the keys that the seller left worked on any of the doors. It was a big house <clears throat> and the wife was very upset. She was up all night worrying about other people having keys to her home. So when I called the next day, the husband, was kind of scratching his head. He was like, oh, it was terrible. And here's why. So I went and had my locksmith right away go over and change the locks. It cost me like $200. Um, but he then in turn was so thankful that over the next couple of months, giving me three leads, he gave me three leads of people in his company because uh, he was higher up in his company. But he gave me other people that were relocating in his company or, or moving out. And um, when I went to see these people to sell their homes, they all mentioned the locksmith story. They all mentioned the lock story. And uh, it definitely went a long way. So I would have never have known that about the locks if I didn't make that first call on day one. So having a client close plan, it's easy to do. It's just another touch. It's going deeper in a relationship. And it's something that uh, every agent you know, should definitely take advantage of. Um, home annual home report. That's a script that we use. You know, what do I say? I don't know what to talk to them about. Well, here's a script. You know, basically, hey, it's Willie Miranda. How are you doing today? Is this a good time to talk? Um, I just want to give you a quick call because, I, you know, it's been five months or five years, 10 years, whatever. 
uh, since you bought your home with me. And from time to time, I like to call my clients, provide them with a free uh, uh, annual home value update. Uh, this update gives you a ballpark idea of uh, what your home is worth in today's market. And you can kind of get an idea of also what other homes are selling for. Is that something you'd be interested in? 99% of the time, we're going to say, yeah, absolutely. Send it over to me. Um, great. What's the best email? So this allows me to update, right? Those old emails, those old AOL to Gmail or whatever. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, I just let them know. I'll email it to them or I'll send it to them by regular mail, depending on what they want. Uh, then I say, hey, Mary, as I mentioned, this report, it's only a ballpark figure on your home or what your home is sold for. Please review the report. Let me know if you have any questions or if you're looking to obviously sell, you're more than happy to come over and give you a, a much better um, look at the property give you a much closer value and one last thing do you know of anyone else that uh, may be interested in receiving this type of report for their home and maybe someone that's looking to sell maybe someone that's looking to buy a home and a lot of times they don't know right but a lot of times again they'll call you two months three months a week whatever um, because again you reach out to them and you ask them because again we gave them good information about their property we gave them this, we gave them a call, and it's law of reciprocity kicks in where they want to give us something. So uh, last piece on here, if you know of anyone looking to buy or sell, please give me a call with the name and number, I'll take good care of them. And um, that goes a long way. Client events, uh, we do usually four client events throughout the year. This is a comedy show that we've done a few times. We do our golf event every year on the bottom left. Um, we have our pie event that we're actually doing um, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving here in the States. Uh, we're, we're, we're up to almost, uh, I think, close to over 400 pies that we're going to be giving out to our clients. Uh, because of COVID, we don't have them coming in now and hugging and taking pictures and all that, but uh, we're going to be doing a drive-by. So they'll, um, they'll pull up, they'll beep the horn, we'll go out, you know, apple, pumpkin, what did you order? We give them their pie, thank them for their business and uh, the loyalty and the way they go. So uh, we'll be giving those out uh, here uh, in the next week. We've been doing this now. I want to say this is our 10th year, maybe even more, uh, that we've been giving out these pies each and every year, and they go a long way. And they're, you know, $8, $10 pies. Um, but again, it's not the pie that they're coming for. It's the relationship. And they really appreciate, and some people do, just come for the pie because uh, they're cheap and they don't want to buy one. Um, but it's, you know, a gift to them and they really appreciate it. Um, so those are some of the, you know, client events that we do. And uh, we have, um, you know, other events like um, Easter events where we actually have my nephew dress up in Easter bunny costume and kids come in and they take pictures and we have real live bunnies running around and they get face painting and that type of stuff. But uh, we, we've done a lot of different things, Christmas events, you know, at breakfast with Santa. Um, so there's different things you could do, but, you know, to start, maybe just pick one a year to do and you build it from there. Uh, we do a lot of reviews to get referrals. We want to make sure that we know what, the, you know, people's first name, last name. We want to know how, how was the experience they had with the real estate agent? You know, can we use, um, you know, their information, any marketing that we do? Would they refer us to their family and friends, those type of things. So getting surveys and doing that, you could do it through a company called um, Survey Monkey, and that's worked out very well. And um, you know, we can also send them a letter like this, offer them a $25 gift card if they give you a review. And we give them the links where they can go and actually put a review on. This is something that we just started recently and it's working okay but it doesn't replace picking up the phone and calling them and asking for a review and actually walking them through it. All right, and then we get a testimonial um, sign off to make sure we have permission to use them in social media or online and stuff like that. We always like to make sure that um, we have a signature from them uh, with their permission uh, to use them in there. So yeah, so that is our uh, business planning workshop. Hopefully you, um, have your business plan sheet and had some things filled out on there. But uh, Draga, what, what did you think about the last piece, number six, on the repeat and referral business? Anything on there that um, you're gonna apply to your business? Uh, really, definitely, you know, a lot of value. 
um, I actually did only one event last year and it was amazing. It was bowling event. But, bowling, uh, yes, yes. And uh, we did it, uh, my kids and I, everything by ourselves. Uh, it was challenging, but I don't know how we, we, we were so happy. A lot of people arrived and it was, as you say, uh, more relationship than the value, but was the value still there? And I, I am actually very giving person and uh, I would love to have something now when uh, we have COVID and maybe not the possibility to do big kind of events. And I really like that you're doing Pi event now maybe people driving through and you just, it's people just like to connect and to, to see that you are grateful. Um, I like this annual home review, everything else, like if we are in touch with them, it builds relationship. That right. is the thing I did a really, um, I have stagnant period after the COVID, but I did reach out postcards, uh, calling them, asking them how are they, and it started now getting, <laughs> it's starting now, people calling me now to sell, because during this five, six months, I didn't know, are you thinking of selling? No, I just right. do not need any information, any help, but how are you doing first, and then if it comes to real estate, to, to real estate, I talk, yeah. but um, I believe that is, uh, that I've got some clients just because I'm sending newsletter by email, Earlier I was sending um, um, direct letters. I love your because your is completely different. Mm -hmm. It's personal, <laughs> recipe, picture of family, updates, what are you doing? Um, and I just, if you don't mind asking you, uh, do you have somebody writing for you? Maybe you give materials or how do you make it? Or is there some company that maybe, you know, uh, you use? Yeah, there's a, there's a, um, we, we used to use a company called Service for Life. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard about them. Yeah, serviceforlife.com is a company that will actually uh, do your four page newsletter for you, right? Mm -hmm. But it's more generic, right? It's generic because they have to give the same thing out to all the agents. Everybody, all the that's the reason I love your. <laughs> yeah, so what we started doing is that we felt that the engagement on those were a lot less because there wasn't any personal involvement. But then when we started mm -hmm. putting in there, what's up with Willie or pictures of my family, stuff like that, people really like that. So um, it's just a word document and you know, you definitely have to uh, plan things, but um, Trish does a great job and we sit down, you know, um, on a regular basis and go over what are some things we want in a newsletter this month. And, yeah. Definitely, you can put different things, and depending on the season, depending on on sure. on, uh, on uh, the situation. But definitely, you can also put just listed the coming soon. You can put different things, and uh, you mail to your database or to leads too. You uh, we email we email to leads in our database, but we mail to our VIPs and A list. And oh, that is clever. Yeah. Yes, yes, because I did, I did wrong. I must admit, I, I was uh, mailing to different people too many, <laughs> and it cost me too much money. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Uh, emailing is good. Yeah, your very best clients get it in the mail, but mm -hmm. email to the to the masses. Excellent, excellent. Then everything that you have provided today is uh, of great value for me, and I believe to the others. And I want to thank you and Trisha and uh, the whole team and uh, your brother, Brian. Everybody's absolutely great. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. And, um, you know, for everyone watching the replay of this, um, take this business planning workshop sheet. You know, you go through the six components that we talked about. Pick one or two things that you want to implement in your business going into the new year. And um, just start chipping away at it. And, um you know, I've, I've done a lot of strategy calls with people. If you want to set up a call, you can go on to uh, our website or send me an email. Be more than happy to set up a strategy call uh, on any specific needs or questions that you may have. But the goal here is for us to make our businesses better. And the way we do that is by implementing and executing uh, on different things like we talked about here today. So, so thank you so much. 
I appreciate everything you have done for uh, us. And uh, I wish you a wonderful day. And thank you so much, Billy. All right. Sounds good. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Yes. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.